Nakamute ko, sir. Oh, nakamute ka, sir. Ay, excited na, excited. So, good good evening, everyone. Uh, let's good just say good day, day everyone. Um, this is again, Engineer Gideon G. Buniel, your uh, teacher for this um, subject. Our topic for tonight is all about the embedded system. So you're quite wondering what this embedded systems is all about. Now let's start. Overview of embedded systems. An embedded system is a combination of computer hardware and software designed for a specific function. So it's from the word itself is specific. Embedded systems may also function within a larger system. The systems can be programmable or have a fixed functionality. Industrial machines, consumer electronics, agricultural and processing industry devices, automobiles, medical equipment, cameras, digital watches, household appliances, airplanes, vending machines, and toys, as well as mobile devices are possible locations for an embedded system. So there are a lot of locations for these embedded systems. These are these at the same time are examples of embedded systems. So let's proceed. Components of the embedded system. As the embedded system is made up for of hardware and software components, in below section, hardware components are described below. So these are the hardware components. So again, embedded system is also a combination of hardware and software you use. You make use of the hardware and you program it through the software. Again, the components. So every embedded system has a power supply. So I'm just using this image for you to visualize um, what power supply um, can be integrated in an embedded system. So this this um, TX650 can also be a power supply for your embedded systems. For the embedded system, the power supply is the key component to provide the power to the embedded system circuit. So from the word power supply, so it powers up the system. Usually, the embedded system requires 5 volt supply or can be ranged from 1.8 to 3.3 volts. So because embedded systems nowadays mainly um, focuses on the electronics, that's why most of it require only 5 volts. There are those that require 12 volts. Um, that's why we we, always, we often say that like for our refrigerators, um, the electricity is not that high because it's already integrated with the electronics. Now, again, we have power supply. The next one is processor. So an embedded system would not be functioning without a processor. So I know you're familiar with processor, right? So processor from your computers, for your cell phone, especially when you are in a gaming niche, okay? For any embedded system, the processor acts as the brain of the system from the word brain. The processor is responsible for deciding the performance of the embedded system. In the market, there are multiple types of processor available and can be selected as per user requirement. The embedded system can act as a microcontroller and microprocessor. The processor can be an 8-bit processor, 16-bit processor, and a 32-bit processor. Now, most, most of us, I know you're familiar with 64-bit um, system as architecture for your computers and... Processors has also those bit 8 bit 16 and 32. Again, from power supply to processor, now we go to the memory. Can you um, distinguish what memory is this? Anyone? RAM, sir. RAM, very good. As there are different microcontrollers used in the embedded system, the memory is present in the microcontroller itself. There are basically two types of memory, the random access memory and the read-only memory. So um, these things are already lectured to you for how many times. We know that um, random access memory is, uh, um, is not permanent, but the read-only read -only memory is permanent. So those 
are the familiar definition of Ram and um, Rome as they say it. Yes, sir. So again, from what is that? Power supply and then processor and then memory. So these are the components of an embedded system. Now let's go to timer counters. In some of the application, there's always a requirement of delay that need to provide in the application. For example, in LED display applications, there is a requirement of some delay so that the LED can be continuing blink. And for that timer and counter can be used in the embedded system. So as you can see, like for example, um, in your computers or in your different appliances, we, we can see that uh, there is also a corresponding LED. So like the color green, the color red. So those are indicators um, that your embedded systems are still functioning. So like in troubleshooting mostly like computers, if the blinking is fast, so that's a separate problem. If it's slow, that's a separate problem. Okay, when it's steady, meaning it's stable. Now we go to communication ports. Communication port is the type of interface that is used to communicate with other types of embedded systems. In the embedded system, there are there is multiple types of communication ports like UART, USB, Ethernet, RS485, and many more. So I'm this picture here is just a visualization because these are ports here. So we have VGA, HDMI for our um, system units. And for our embedded systems, you can also access them like universal, asynchronous, I forgot the term for the UART. And then we have also the, you know, uh, UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter. And now for USB, we know what USB is, Universal Your Bus, Ethernet. Um, Ethernet is this one. So the one that you plug your um, UTP cable. You're familiar with it, right? So yes, that's yes. Ethernet. RS-485, I don't think that um, you already encountered this one because I think this is the old one. Old connections. Um, usually used in electronic um, in um, electronic parts, components for communication, especially for programming. So in our field, we use also RS-485. Output and input. When the embedded system is used, the input is needed to interact with the system. The input to the embedded system can be provided by the sensor or by the user itself. The processor used in the embedded system can be based on input and output. So we have a lot of examples here in this picture. We know um, that input accepts any type of like in keyboard, you type your letter, so that's an input. Usually, an output is is the result of why of the action for your input. Like for example, when you type letter K on your keyboard, it will display um, letter K on your screen. So that's the output. And then when you type it, and you want to print, and so the printer becomes the output now. So we are very familiar with this one. Circuits used in application when the embedded system is designed, there are several hardware components that can be used for design purposes. The selection of the circuit is completely dependent on the application used for the embedded systems. For example, in temperature sensor application, there is a requirement of temperature sensors for measuring temperature. As you can see in the image on the right side, um, so we, used, uh, we, we call this PCB. And then um, every embedded system has this one. So your the sensors are connected here, um, the power supply, the ICs, transistors, the resistors can be found on um, the printed circuit board, which which acts as the circuits. Um, you can, as you can see in your computers, we have motherboard and you can differentiate already what are the inclusions of our motherboard. So there's, there are a lot of components inside it. Hardware components of the embedded system. When all the hardware components are selected for an embedded system, the next task is to select 
software components for designing an embedded system. So again, as I've mentioned er earlier, embedded system is a combination of the hardware and software. So the hardware will not function and will not correspond to other um, components in your system if you will not use a software to program and to coordinate with other uh, components inside the embedded system. So you're familiar with assembler. So in, uh, in our college days, assem assembler is one of the most difficult um, so uh, one of the most difficult to program because uh, an, an equivalent code, like for example, you just have to type like four lines when in reality, in higher language, it's already like a paragraph because the assembler is used when the programming language used for designing the application is assemb assembly language. The assembly language program is then converted into hex code. Imagine the hex code so that it can be further processed. And if, imagine when you upload the assembler, the computer interprets it as one zero, one zero, one zero. Imagine that your letter, your number one, your number four, your letter K has different um, binary values um, that, the, that the computer reads. And after writing the code, the programmer um, use, is used for writing the program in the chip. So uh, you you will always need a programmer like the RS485. Sometimes there are com components in the embedded system that cannot be programmed without the RS485 because it's the only port that you can upload the code. Whereas as I've introduced to you when our during our last meeting, the Arduino can already be programmed using the USB. Um, Specifically, when if you have already used the Epson L3110, the USB connector to print it is the one used in Arduino Uno. In Arduino Nano, you can already use the charger for your from your cell phones, the the Android type, and there are there are also it, um, uh, microcontrollers that need only the Type C connector. Are you still there, guys? Ma'am. Okay, yes, Patalia. Mate, Judy, ah, is Ryan. Okay. I, the, uh, Marvin and Lasson is not yet, uh, are not yet around. So let's just proceed. Emulator. An emulator is a software tool that is used to execute the functions of the host system. All the components can be controlled by the emulator tool. The emulator is also used for finding the bugs and debugging code. The emulator also used to transfer the code from the host system to the target system. If you're familiar with um, Eclipse, Eclipse is has an emulator. Android Studio has an emulator. So they interpret your the data that you put in there, the program, the code, and it displays the corresponding result, right? Are you familiar with Eclipse and Android Studio? <laughs> ah, emulator like blue stocks. Oh my god, um, I interpret. But in IT world, there are emulators. I've used the I've tried using Eclipse and Android Studio. If your computers are not that high end in terms of um um specs, then you expect to the program to be laggy. Okay, next, we have compiler. The compiler is a type of software that is used to convert the programming language into some language that the target machine can understand, understand and execute the functions. The basic use of the compiler is to transfer the high-level code into some low-level language. The low-level languages include machine code, object code, and assembly language. So this is just an example. Um, in the hardware community, um there is a corresponding tool para um to make sure that the program um or the instruction are stored well so this is just an example but the in the, the reality the compiler if you have used a lot of programs already by visual studio um it has a compiler so it interprets the 
the high level language that you have programmed and then it will pass into the low level language so uh, like move dx move dl those are the examples of high level um, low level language until it is organized into binaries like 1010 so we're familiar with that and compiler and compiler helps a lot because like in software you can actually determine the errors because of the compiler and it points out to the number of what specific line you uh, you had an error and then eventually you you can fix that error so architecture of an embedded system so can you can you see the picture clearly guys oh clara sir okay an architecture of an embedded system simply starts with an input and again it has an output but in the middle as you can see from the input we have application what application you use the embedded os and then we have this embedded processor so the one that processes all the data or the input that you have okay it's either you also have peripheral devices and then since we have here the software we have here uh, the hardware rather and the software these two will work together to successfully come out with an output intended from the input so if we we use the shortcut like input to output but in the middle there is a processing system to make sure that the data that you want to transpire will be outputted clearly and the result will be as expected as much as possible okay so that is the embedded system just have to familiar you you just have to be familiar with this so that in the near future you can understand what an embedded system is embedded system design process so we have um we always have a flow charts in our life right when we make system especially now that you are in the next sem you will be having your thesis so flow charts are are part of the paper so like for embedded system how do you do it so you need an idea here idea what embedded system should i make then conceptualization, you now come up with the things that you want to, to combine together. You analyze whether it's worthy enough to be on the system, whether um, it's worthy for the people. Then you design. Design like even just in a pen or there are now tools like AutoCAD, Google Sketch that you can use to design your products then after the design of course we implement it now we go to the development and testing so in our field in computer engineering we always do development of products like earlier i've defended my master's thesis uh, one of the international conferences so they've questioned me about the development and for the commercialization of the product so um which is somehow development and testing is one of the critical aspect of the embedded system before you come out with the desired result so in layman's term dirigajud madugo so development and testing now if you have worked this out completely then we go to the deployment so we have like in reality huh? in reality um, when you create design like um, control systems appliances those we have a lot of appliances in, in our homes that um that are example of the embedded systems so when you deploy it you make sure that um, from the development and testing um phase you have your quality assurance so that when you deploy it people will not have a problem with your embedded system so but there are things that that's inevitable lampas See, see Thanos Kethor, I'm inevitable. And then, since it's inevitable, problems are inevitable, we need support. That's why you're, like, you're 
information technologies. In the near future, you can be network um, support specialist, those things. So support is really a need. Like when you buy a cell phone and then you inquire, why is this faulty? So you call the support. That's when the proper support intervenes. Then when you identify that there's a problem, like, oh, the keypad are not working. So what will you do with it? So upgrade. So you need to upgrade or um, alter what, what's missing with the product or the embedded system that you have come up with. And then retirement. So let the the process um, go around, go around. This is a, a life cycle of process. So that's the embedded system design process. Sell up. So oh, good, good. Embedded system design process. So we have here. Oh, this is as PCB. So. As you can see, there are connections here, uh, pretty circuit board, huh? So this this is actually a scoreboard for ping pong. So example na ni sila sa embedded system. And we have on, on, on and off switch, player one paddle, score, <coughs> the score here, player one paddle, and every every aspect of this um, embedded system that's why it's called embedded because all of these things work together to provide a quality output so the embedded computer is a microchip uh, 16 lf 84a so there are a lot of microchip microchips in the market as you can see so example again for our embedded system so your actually your car door is an example of an embedded system. So let me just um, review my presentation. I think I I was not able to to alter the the title. So like for this one, electronic ping pong. The one that I presented to you earlier. This is an electronic ping pong example so and then the next one let's exit this first or uh way maglibog electronic ping pong siya so electronic ping pong and this one is that embedded system sir ang madalang loan sa computer box dan mga automatic na sakyanan ah um, like wait i'll explain it properly ah like for this one. So it's specific. Yeah, the, the function is very specific, right? Like for example, an embedded system for a car door. So we have window stall sensor. Like uh, if you will, if you cannot, uh, if you were not able to close the door properly, there will be a blinking of light inside your car, right? So that indicates that um, the door is not closed properly. Then we have window motor, lock control, lock actuator, open door sensor, window control buttons. So we have here window control buttons, window motor. So mostly uh, it's more like uh, I do call wiper motors for manual, but for automatic, you can already control it by buttons. Lock control, we also have here um, child lock system and lock actuator so it actually that's why um car doors are very tight because um it's very sealed inside it the rubber helps a, helps a lot and that's an example of an embedded system basically an embedded system functions specifically like for this one just to open the car door so for opening the car door there are a lot of um systems that are involved here right and a lot of components just to make sure that your car door is safe you open the car you exit properly and and the and the developers of these cars made sure that what you're not traveling now your door is 
would be possibly open along the way, especially when you're you're going to a speed like 160, 200, 100, which um in the if if the worst scenario comes, there will be an accident. Okay, got it. Uh, another example. Wait, I'll just paste it. I think I was not able to. Wait, uh, was not able to copy the file. So, another example is a refrigerator. So, do you do do, do you have refrigerators? Say in yung balay, no, right? Down, sir. Oh, ah, uh, the refrigerator. The main function of refrigerator is to make things inside cold and to store the food properly, right? Or not, or to not spoil the food inside it. So you put water there. After how many hours it turns, um, um, the temperature is so cold that you want to drink it a lot of water. And specific, specifically the freezer to store the food, like for, I think food would, can be stored like for a month if you still want to eat it. So we have here the embedded computer. Mostly, um, how do you call that? Inverter type of refrigerator, right? It's the common or the, the most familiar and like sikat sikat nowadays. The old ones um, do not have the electronic circuit inside it. I've seen the electronic circuit of these um, inverter refrigerators. So inside it, we have an embedded computer. So it functions specifically. So no in the 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 only input is temperature control, like when you when you want it much colder so you turn it up or turn it down then the compressor con we have compressor control this is technical because um we, we do not build um refrigerators but when we talk about computers what is embedded in this computer here you, can you see my um my presentation Um, can you see? Claro, man, sir. Uh, how about the arrow? Oh. oh. Okay. The embedded computer, and then um, human interaction for these doors here. Network interaction, maybe. So there are intelligent. There are also intelligent inverter um refrigerators. So basically. Um, as you can see here, actual temperature and required temperature. So inverters nowadays, if they meet the specific temperature, like the refrigerator should be only 7 degrees Celsius, so that's the maintaining temperature value, then that's where our embedded system will always um, intervene. Because the in the embedded computer, na, they program this one that, um, for the selected controls that you have, like 7 degrees Celsius, um, the comp uh, I think it's the compressor, no? That puts cold, like how do you know, how do you, I cannot distinguish the technical of the refrigerator, but there is something there inside it that makes it cold, right? Usually, uh, there's a blower like an aircon inside it. So, oh, compressor can tawag her, oh, but okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, Ryan. So it's a compressor. Ah, okay. So the, okay. And then, once the comp, comp, diba, you have compressor, if the actual temperature is like 10 degrees, so the compressor still um, pumps out freon, diba, to make the refrigerator cold. But when it reaches 7 degrees Celsius, so you usually... Um, the compressor settles already, but at, at the cycle of the temperature inside, once it turns up again, and then it needs to have the required temperature. It's it's a it's a cycle. You get do you get the idea, guys? So just a quick review for the embedded system. 
again, an embedded system is combination of computer hardware and software design for a specific function. So you just have to remember this one. An embedded system is a combination of computer hardware and software designed for a specific function. So that's why um, I've told you earlier that like, for example, the, the ping pong here, the, it only tells you the score. So behind it, you can already score the um, when one player, player two, plays ping pong. So you have an automated scoreboard. Now, like for example, again, let's recap. For embedded system like this door, so specifically, its system is designed only to open the door. And most of it to prevent accident. Diba? If you have cars, if you are if you are rich. Wait, then you can override it if you have a program in your car. Um, you cannot override it because it's only the manufacturer that can program it. So for those um, like Tesla, Tesla are very uh, how you call that highly efficient cars nowadays. They all they have computer box inside this one. But since it's internet uh, dependent also, so there are people who can hack the the car. That's why. Um, Tesla is not that safe in terms of security, especially when we have good hackers. But again, a specific function, open the door and close the door. And make sure that the door is closed properly and it's not open. It's one way also to prevent accident. Again, example is refrigerator. The refrigerator, the main function is to store the food. And to make it last, like, for how many days? And make your co wa water cold <laughs> aside from the dispenser. So I prefer um, refrigerator. Now we go to the processor again. Huh? Embedded system, hardware and software and specific function. So you just have to remember those, those three words. Hardware software and specific function so that's an embedded system the processor processors the processor is termed as the brain of any electronic systems that incorporate into a laptop computer smartphones and embedded system so we know for a fact about processors right if you have personal computers we have now i3 i5 i7 so the higher the number, the higher the spec. And the higher the spec... Ryzen, no mahabol. Huh? Ryzen, sir, no mahabol. Ah, uh, Ryzen, yeah. Oh. Ryzen. But I'm not really familiar yet with Ryzen, fully familiar because I'm using Intel. So, but Ryzen is very famous nowadays, especially in gaming niche. Oh, nakagana mo ko dun sa Ryzen, sir. Kaya murag may semi-package siya ka may sa graphics mo rin ng... Makatabang gapon ba? Yeah. Um, graphics can help a lot because mostly sa in gaming niche, you you do not need actually the higher RAM. You need a, a good graphic um graphics card which has which is very good in Ryzen because nowadays games are online, so it's more like dependent on also on the internet. So graphics okay, because it's an output of the system. Very good. So now we go to the different types of processor, uh, processors. Yeah. So we have microprocessor. So inside, if you have seen already your system unit, your, they call it a CPU, but um, it's actually called a system unit because there are a lot of components inside it. And the processor is this one. If you have seen this, this is the processor or the CPU inside it, uh, computers. So microprocessor, the fundamental process of the system is denoted by a microprocessor incorporated in the embedded systems. There are various types of microprocessors in the market implemented by different enterpriser, enterprises. Ryzen, Intel, Mac, um, they have different processors inside their computers and laptops. The microprocessor is a standard processor which comprises of ALU, 
control unit and club of registers known control registers status registers and scratch pad registers so these are very deeply technical terms because it involves already the registers registers inside a processor so we just have to be familiarized with what microprocessor it is so from the word micros is small processor unlike in the old days their processor is really huge and it can only store like mb amount of data whereas today we can already store terabytes of data in a small um, size processors microcontroller i've introduced you the arduino but arduino has a microcontroller inside it we call um usually it's at mega 328 um for arduino uno the microcontroller is a standard which is available in different size and packages okay the input reading and reacting to its corresponding output is the fundamental function of the basic microcontroller. So it is called the general purpose and input and output processor, so GPIO. In our field, um, we often use microcontrollers, but as a package itself, we call it, sometimes we have Arduino, Arduino Uno, Nano, Arduino Mega, and different uh, microcontrollers we have really pad those are examples of microcontrollers so as you can see here if you have seen this into your device devices these are actually microcontrollers so soldered into your components here so there are a lot of um, different manufacturers of microcontrollers that's why they're very specific especially a hit that's why you need heat sink always when you use microprocessors, microcontroller, para dilim exhaust and microcontrollers. We also have embedded processor. So in the picture, as you can see, embedded, so you cannot remove it just like in one um, pool because you need a special um, tool to remove this soldered pieces here as you can see it's very tiny and you need a very good hands hand and eyes coordination for this one the embedded processor is structured to control the electrical and mechanical functions it comprises of numerous blocks like timer program memory date memory with data memory reset power supply data memory interrupt controller clock oscillator systems interfacing circuits specific circuits and system application ports and circuit mostly embedded systems can um, embedded processors are not suggested to be removed and cannot be removed because it's permanently installed so from the word permanently installed if if this malfunctions that's why we say goodbye already so in our refrigerators if it's the compressor then it's replaceable but when it comes to the electronics and the one faulty is your micro uh, your processor then it's somehow it's a good buy or you just have to change your motherboard which will cost you a lot of money okay judian are you still there yes sir okay Next, digital signal processor. The fundamental process of the system is denoted by a microprocessor incorporated in the embedded systems. There are various types of microprocessors in the market, again, implemented by the different enterprises. Um, so again, we have, for the processors, we have microprocessor, we have microcontroller, we have embedded processor and we have digital signal processor. You just have to remember those things. Okay? When we conduct uh, like quiz, you can use this. You can actually use this one and you just have to read it, especially in exams. So that's, that's it for the um, embedded systems. So you, do you have questions, guys?
I'll stop recording. <laughs>